So once I was attending some teachings in a Buddhist center and the teacher shows us this beautiful diagram. And this is called wheel of life or wheel of samsara. And if you see this diagram, very beautiful. If you see this diagram, uh, there is a devil-like figure <laughs> which is eating this wheel, right? So this devil is basically representing the death. And it is, so this whole wheel of life is in the grip of the death. <laughs> That's a, kind of a symbolic representation of it. Then out of it, there is like a 12, most outer layer has a 12 different diagram, which would represent like a dependent originations. We won't go much deeper into this in this video. Um, but we'll get just the basic idea what exactly it is. And then there is these six different, you know, uh, part of the inner layer after the most outer layer, the second layer, there's a uh, six different parts which represent six different realms, right? From hungry ghost to, you know, human to divine, all these different realms. Inside it, there are two parts of the inner circle of that which represent the karma, the good karma, the bad karma, that sort of stuff. And inside, of, inside all of it is there is this three creatures, a pig, a rooster and the snake, right? And this represents the root of all the problems. This represents the, you know, from where this whole cycle starts. And they are called three poisons, right? The rooster, the snake and the pig. Of course, the snake represents the aversion. The rooster represents the attachment. And the pig represents the ignorance, right? So these are the three different poisons, which is making this whole cycle run, right? Which is at the heart of the heart of our problem, right? Which is the at the core of everything that we do. Right, these three basic, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, elements: attachment, aversion, and the ignorance. Right, and Buddha is out of, uh, you know, if you see in the diagram, Buddha is outside of this uh, whole wheel, and he's pointing towards the moon, which is nirvana, liberation. Right. So we want to talk about these three fundamental, you know, this deepest problem, which is basically these three poisons. And Vipassana also works on these three different poisons, right? So the whole practice of Vipassana doesn't really, you know, deal with too much external stuff. It deals with the root of the problem. And it says when you cut down the root, the external thing goes away anyway, right? You don't need to work on these 12 different things or six different things or all these different things. You need to work on the root and the root of the problem is these three poisons, right? Okay, attachment, aversion and ignorance. So let's see them in a little bit more detail, what exactly they are and how does Vipassana work on them? Right. So attachment <laughs> is, uh, you know, it feels like if, if you ask me what exactly is the attachment, my understanding would be, you know, I like certain people, places and things. Right. And that is the attachment. Right. I dislike certain people, places and things. That is my aversion. Right. Towards the external world. In the external world, I feel good about something. So I'm attached to it. I feel bad about something. I am not attached to it. Right. So that is that will be my definition of attachment. Right. And uh, Vipassana goes a lot more deeper than that. That's much more external layer. Something like Vipassana would say, uh, this is not a real cause, right? Because for the same person, there is no property of liking and disliking in the external object. The external objects are neutral. We are giving them these properties of liking and disliking, right? For a person, the same person, somebody likes, somebody doesn't like, somebody is neutral about it. So this person doesn't have this quality of liking and disliking. This quality of liking and disliking is inside yourself, right? Okay, how is it inside yourself? What exactly does that mean, right? There's so much, uh, there's different layer to this thing, but ultimately it comes down to that what happens is basically when I see someone, uh, based on my past experiences, I feel certain emotions inside my body, right? And these are like dozens of, I mean, these are only dozens of different emotions that I feel. Uh, but what happens is when I see someone, I feel good. I feel certain emotions, right? I feel this attraction. I feel this repulsion inside my body and it's actual physical feeling. It's not some kind of a psychological imagination, right? When I like somebody, I actually feel it in my body. I feel light, I, my heart opens up and all these kind of stuff. When I feel anger, I feel, you know, like heat in my body, kind of tightness in the body and all these kind of stuff, right? So there is like an actual physical component that is going on inside my body. And what Vipassana is saying, you are not liking, disliking anybody else. It's not like good or bad this is. This is how it is, right? Basically on the deeper level, what is happening because of your past experience, you have built up, you know, a certain kind of uh, uh, model inside our head. 
So what happens if somebody I, I meet, I know, if they stimulate that model, then something inside me, you know, tells me I like this thing and I feel certain kind of emotions in my body, right? So one way we can solve, try to solve this is like, you know, <laughs> arrange our life where everything that we deal with is the thing that we like, everything we deal with it, you know, I avoid dealing with anything that we don't like and which is not practical to do and this liking and disliking is also very dynamic. If I had like, okay, these are the hundred things I like and these are the hundred things I don't like, I can manage to do it, right? But what happens is this liking, disliking is just like, you know, dynamic, random sort of a process. So if I do like, you know, if I try to achieve 10 things I like, there's like 200 new things that I don't like or like, you know, it keeps changing, it keeps changing. So it's not practical to work it externally, this liking, disliking or attachment, uh, this rooster in a diagram, right? What Vipassana says is, basically, is first of all, this liking and disliking is happening internally, not externally, and they are happening on your sensation. They are happening on certain level of uh, bodily emotions, right? What you like and dislike uh, is basically these different bodily emotions, right? And you need to work on that level. In the beginning, you are not sensitive enough to see this thing. So Vipassana is step by step gets it more sensitive first of all, like what is going on inside ourselves. Our sensitivity is very less in the beginning. But with the more practice, we become more sensitive. And then you will see like this liking, there are different emotions come into the body and there's actual physical repulsion, right? It's almost like a magnet. It's almost like a, you know, uh, you put a needle around the magnet and there is a force in the magnet, right? You will feel exact same kind of a thing inside yourself, right? When you see somebody and you feel attracted, you will feel almost similar kind of a force that a magnet has towards a needle, right? It's actual force that is uh, attraction, that is attachment and that is aversion, right? That is repulsion. Uh, so that is more deeper layer of attachment and, you know, repulsion. That is the more deeper layer of the rooster and snake, right? this process, this actual physical process of attachment and aversion. And it is unconscious in the beginning, but the, with the practice of Vipassana, it becomes very, very conscious, right? <laughs> so conscious that you wish you wouldn't be seeing this. But you become aware of this thing, and then you can deal with it, right? Then you can deal with it. And basically this attachment and aversion, what the diagram is showing is root cause of all our problem, right? How is it root cause of all our problem? You take any problem and you can trace it back to your attachment, right? You can trace it back to this process. For example, uh, let's say I'm feeling jealous. Why am I feeling jealous, right? What is happening basically inside myself, I get attached to something, right? Let's say I get attached to a person, but now some I cannot have the person, but somebody else is having that person. So I'm feeling jealous, right? Depression. What is depression, right? Let's say I was attached to something. I was at living with a person. I was very attached to the person. And for some reason, that person was taken away from me, right? Maybe because they don't like me or maybe because of the death or whatever reason. Because I, I was attached to something that was taken away from me, I feel depressed, right? You can push, put anything, anger, what is anger? Like, you know, I want something, I'm attached to something, but I cannot get it. The things are not happening the way I want, right? That is, that creates anger. Anxiety, you can put anything and you can trace it back to the attachment, right? The root is attachment. And this is why the Vipassana Buddha and everything is saying, work on the root, right? There is no working on the external layer. I mean, there is working on the external layer, but it's not so much effective. As effective, you can just work on the root and the ma like a magic, everything else changes externally, right? So that is uh, how actually it is a root problem, this attachment and aversion and it's actual physical problem, which is currently unconscious, but with the practice of Vipassana, you will become conscious of it and you can, you know, uh, basically learn to be equanimous with this, right? There's this bunch of dozens of different feelings and we are running in the cycle with uh, these feelings, right? Uh, we feel fear and we start to avert it, right? With the practice, some practice like Vipassana, you start to look into it. What exactly is this thing? What exactly is this fear, right? It's just a sensation and it just lasts for like two, three, four seconds and I'm, my entire life is designed around this, you know, my in inability to feel certain emotions, right? And it's not also, it's so absurd and so random. At some point you feel like, come on, man, this is so stupid, right? It's not that I don't like to feel the fear, right? I go to... People watch horror movies, right? People wa want to feel the fear, right? So I'm not even uncomfortable with the feeling of fear. But when it's attached to my identity, then I feel uncomfortable, right? So you see most of these processes which is going on inside ourselves, and you learn to be equanimous with that, right? You learn to be equanimous with that. And the more equanimous you become with these sensations, you will notice your mind becomes settles down. Your mind starts to settle down, right? 
uh, for example the mind is so restless we saw this uh, problem of different emotions for example right jealousy anger hatred another way we can see the manifestation of deeper attachment and aversion is this uh, restlessness of the mind or this you know so many people have asked me in the future like how can you stop thinking <laughs> you know will that practice of vipassana will you know help me to stop thinking all these different thoughts are going on to my mind and i just don't like that it's so restless out of my hand right and the answer is yes vipassana will solve it right because what is going on is i am getting again the process the root cause is attachment right what is happening is i am basically getting attached to one thing right as soon as i get attached to something my mind is start to plan and plot right the mind is like a program mind is like a computer it is start to solve it it start to problem solving right i like something and it start to you know come up with different ideas how can i get it how can i avoid it all these kind of things and with that there is some other stuff are going on which is like what if that happens then i will die and all these kind of things right so mind becomes very active if you get attached to something and we get attached to like thousands of things right thousands is like maybe a small word we get attached we are doing this from the childhood right we get attached to so many different things and what is happening is with each thing that we get attached to mind is active mind is trying to figure out how can i avoid it how can i you know practically it is trying to figure out how can i do this right and because there are so many different thing and they are all in the conflict of each other like if i try to fulfill one desire my mind comes up with a solution to you know fulfill one desire there's five different desires that i cannot fulfill right five different attachment that i that cannot happen so it becomes like uh, you know it hangs <laughs> you know it's uh, it becomes like uh, freezed it doesn't know what to do because there is it cannot come so it really tries very hard to come up with a solution which can fulfill all of your attachments and which can fulfill you know avoid all of your uh, repulsion right it tries to do that which is impossible how can you do that right so mind become very restless very uncomfortable very anxious all these kind of things but fundamentally the root cause is always attachment and aversion right buddha was so deep his teachings are you know i mean uh, it's so subtle and so deep that is mind blowing so every problem that we are having is basically is the problem of attachment and aversion right and it is happening on the level of the bodily sensation not even externally this is what the vipassana said right and once we learn to be you know become more equanimous with our bodily sensation the attachment and aversion start to fade away and once the attachment and aversion start to fade away the mind becomes more quieter the external life becomes more easy and all these kind of things all these problems kind of get dissolved then the pig which is even the root cause of the attachment and aversion right at some point when we practice enough when we have uh, you know uh, matured in our practice be in the beginning our problem is basically is like we are feeling very uncomfortable with uh, you know we have so much different problem a, a normal person will try to solve it in the real world but at some point you realize it cannot be solved in the real world right so what is going to happen is either you go into depression and like give up or you go inside and you see like what is the root cause of this thing right so the vipassana start working on that layer right you attend a 10 day vipassana boot camp or something like that and you see like wow this the cause for all my problems is not only external there's something going on internal as well right and what vipassana says is if you practice you will start to feel more relaxed you will have less thoughts and you will have uh, more you know less uh, defilements right for example if you used to feel angry if you used to feel hurt if you used to feel all these things that will come down right and it will calm down and this is very important to us in the beginning right because we are not feeling comfortable so that has a lot of value for us right and it is doing it based on this very science right there is this process of attachment and aversion the more you start to become comfortable with different kind of sensations the more you automatically become you know comfortable with your different feelings and automatically becomes your mind becomes you know more calm so that is like initial layer from where vipassana works but then it goes more deeper uh, once we have you know conquered attachment aversion at up to at least certain level that it doesn't affect us so much then it goes into more deeper level and the deeper level is the ignorance right this uh, pig in a diagram is uh, at one point you realize why am i getting attached and aversion to these different things right what is this process why is there this process right what is happening is there any cause what is the cause of this process of being attached and aversion why i am clinging to different things of the you know it's almost uh, <clears throat> as if uh, you know if you see it and vipassana will make it make you see it is like the situation seems to be the deep inside like very very deep inside this is more like um, 
I am drowning and I'm trying to hold on to different things. I'm trying to cling on to different things, right? This gives you, on more deeper level, gives you the feeling like that, right? Which is uh, even the root cause of this attachment and aversion, right? Something inside ourselves is not okay. There's some kind of a very deep-rooted fear that is like, I am not okay, man. I, this something, I need something, right? I, my, I need some people, I need this, I need that to be okay, right? To be, because there's something fundamentally is not right inside myself, right? There's something which is deep inside which is not okay. And that uh, unokayness is creating this uh, attachment and aversion, right? Because of that, I'm clinging to different things and because of that, I'm trying to repulse to different things and all these things are going on. But on the deeper level, there is a very deep, deep, deep rooted fear that something is not right, that something is not okay, right? And that is the ignorance. That is the most, most deeper layer of ignorance is that something is not okay. And, and then... All the scriptures, Indian scriptures, Buddha and all these people are pointing out what really is not okay that you don't know what you are, right? You have total misunderstanding of what you are, is your identity, right? You infused your identity with something else and now you are, you know, trying to solve that problem with clinging to different things which cannot solve the problem like that, right? The deeper levels of satisfaction, right? We are, you know, I want to find the meaning in my life, I want to feel satisfaction, I want to feel happy and all these things. They are all very, very deeply rooted in something that I'm not okay. I need to be okay, right? If I'm okay, then who cares what, you know, who cares about all these different things, right? But the, on the deeper level, there is something which is like, I'm not okay. For some reason, I'm not okay, right? And uh, it's so beautiful what these scripture says or what the Vipassana says in the end is as you grow in, and mature in your practice, is um, almost as if like, somebody is lost in a jungle, right? And he doesn't know what is in the jungle, right? Well, he just, you just lost in the jungle, right? And now you're trying very hard to, you know, protect yourself and this and that uh, within that jungle, right? The same thing has happened inside ourselves. Like we have completely lost our identity, right? If we, we just really deeply, we don't know what exactly we are. And these scriptures and all these practices, they are trying to tell us what exactly you are, right? And it's so beautiful. The... Uh, there's a lot of scriptures in India, Upanishads and all, they talk about this thing, right? They talk, they're entirely dedicated about this thing. In fact, the whole spiritual pursuit is basically to understand what you are, right? To go, to, you know, destroy this ignorance, to destroy this pig, which is even the root cause of attachment and aversion, right? And uh, it's, it's said, I mean, it's, it cannot be understood like this. And of course, I'm not uh, there myself yet, but it is, it's said, uh, that your basic nature is, you know, there's a lot of, they use a lot of words like your basic nature is formless, it is complete, it is bliss, it is, you know, awareness and many, many different ways they try to define it, they try to point it out towards that on the most deeper level, what is going on is so beautiful, but some kind of ignorance of this misunderstanding of our identity is creating, you know, this is starting this whole cycle of samsara. Right? This is starting attachment and aversion. From attachment and aversion comes, you know, the whole different realms and different dependent origination, different karmas or whatever you want to say. But it starts this whole cycle, which is impermanent and which is cyclic, right? Bunch of different things, right? On the deeper level, there's these dozens of things that are keep happening. This keep happening, keep happening, keep happening. And uh, keep rotating us into this cycle of different experiences, right? So that's what the, uh, you know, and, and that's, the, so that's the theory part of it. And what I like about Vipassana is it's a practice, right? It says theory is not going to be very helpful, right? Theory isn't going to, I mean, it's helpful in terms of to, you know, point towards the direction where this is where you're going. And these are the different, you know, measures and these are different, all these different parameters and all that. But it won't have the effect. It won't let you know the process of attachment and aversion. It won't let you know the process of ignorance and all that kind of stuff. Um, intellectually understanding this won't help. It was, it is helpful, but it won't help you in that layer, that level, right? But what I love about the Vipassana, it's a practice. It's not a theory. It's actual practice that will let you see all this, right? It is an actual practice that will, you know, start from the most external outer layer and then very gradually, it takes time, but it's very gradually it takes you inside, right? It very gradually, you know, work with the most external layer of, you know, all this different anxiety, depression, whatever, whatever. It takes you to the deeper layer and shows you like, this is the reason why the attachment and aversion are happening. 
it even takes you more deeper of layers of ignorance and these different this is so beautiful so this is what i find very beautiful about the vipassana meditation is uh, it is a process right it's a, it's actually a practice to uh, you know liberate yourself in a way from this cycle of liberation this cycle of uh, samsara right the way buddha is pointing out and it works on the root level it works on the deepest possible level you can work to eradicate all these problems right once and for all